In the aftermath of Flash Season 6, fans are left wondering, how do the creators top this? Easy, debut Barry Allen's greatest rival, Godspeed. It takes hard work to get characters like Godspeed from comics to your screen. The Flash's smaller TV budget isn't helping either. So, The Binger is breaking down how Flash's rogues gallery changed from their original comic creations. Just don't be shocked when you see blood work, okay? This is gonna be fun. Reverse Flash Technically, this was Tom Cavanaugh's first role in the show, before he was every version of Harris Wells out there. Now, every fan knows that Eobard Thawn was given a serious makeover when he took over Earth One's Wells identity. It makes it hard to compare Reverse Flash to his comic book counterpart because of that. The comic book version of Thawne is always outfitted with the best tech from the future. It's the perk you get when you come from a time way out in the timeline. However, the show missed the mark here. Thawne wore a leather-based suit just like Season 1 Barry. By now, it's clear that it was a budget and comfort decision, but the show's development hurts the earlier episodes. Reverse Flash should be rocking a ring suit by the time he attempts to steal Flash's speed. However, the actual actor to comics comparison isn't that far off. Kavanaugh and his counterpart, Matt Lesher, both give us that creepy Thon smile and imposing stature. Sure, the red eyes from drawing on the negative speed force are a little campy, but it's accurate to the comics. Godspeed. Don't worry, you're not the only one thinking it. Godspeed kinda does look like the White Power Ranger, but we're willing to let it go if you guys are too. The other thing show fans aren't a fan of from what they've seen so far, it has to be those earpieces. It's a bold move and a bit weird, but we'll let it slide. Remember, Godspeed is a relatively new character. He debuted back in 2016 as part of Barry Allen's initial rebirth arc. It might help explain why his look has been nearly identical in both the show and the comics. However, the show appears to lean less on the gold trim around the character and keep him more static and white. They're always big fans of cleaner, less busy designs. We've put him so high up on this list because we fully expect him to rival Reverse Flash in speed and power. Consider this, the show hasn't even begun to explore the full potential of Godspeed's abilities. We're calling it now, he might end up the second fastest speedster in the entire show, maybe even the fastest. Savitar Savitar was wrecking Barry's life for an entire season, and nothing the Scarlet Speedster did could stop this imposing force. Lucky for Barry, H.R. Wells is a true hero, and we will always remember his incredible sacrifice. While we want to obsess over our love for HR, we need to focus on Savitar, since this is his entry. The one issue we've always had with Savitar is the massive amount of armor around him. Nothing about that is true to the comic book version, but the show creators were in a bind. Savitar actually is a cult leader and a godlike ancient being. He's not Barry Allen from the future. That was a new direction for the character, so the creators needed to disguise Savitar more while leaning on the mythos. Hence the shiny armor and CGI Transformer look. You're not so scary without your armor. Savitar was just a fighter pilot with gifted speed by a rogue lightning bolt, as he was working through a flying program. Compared to the show version, some fans will argue the comic version is more of a threat given his volatile nature with the speed force. Gorilla Grodd You might be screaming at your screen wondering why Gorilla Grodd is so high up on this list. Well, here's the hard pill to swallow, CW fans. The show nerfed one of Barry Allen's greatest enemies. Gorilla Grodd is meant to be one of the most dangerous characters in the Flash's rogues gallery. The show stays away from Grodd because he's expensive to make, but apparently, Savitar's CG armor isn't. Anyways, Grodd is a full-fledged gorilla with psychic superpowers, so the show got that much right. But little parts are missing. Even when they travel to the world where Grodd has his own kingdom, he's never shown in his full regal attire. In fact, it took way too many seasons for him to get his iconic headgear. Even then, the show's design looks like a cheap piece of plastic compared to the heavy brass crown the comic character wears. Grodd is supposed to appear more like a king gorilla with a Lex Luthor level of ingenuity. Nothing about the show's look or power depiction honors those facts. We put him this high for his comic book stature. Zoom. So let's get the obvious point out of the way to start this entry. There are multiple Zoom characters in the comics. There's Professor Zoom, the Dr. Wells version of Eobard Thawn, and there's Hunter Zolomon's Reverse Flash, who picks up the moniker Zoom as part of his origin story. We're discussing the Hunter Zolomon character in this entry. Actor Teddy Sears was an excellent choice to play Hunter Zolomon in the show. He fits that deranged villain role while attempting to disguise himself as Jay Garrick. Just let me explain. I mean you no harm. If only his costume was true to form. 
Then again, the Zoom we meet with his pure black suit and blue lightning is a unique take on the character. It works even better when Zoom is turned into a wraith by the Speed Force. Given the fact Zolomon was always destined to become the Black Flash character, we will let the suit change slide. It also makes more sense when we consider the fact that the season before that literally already gave us a reverse Flash look. The deliberate adaptation of Zolomon's look actually worked in the long run. The Thinker Okay, controversial opinion here, but the season 4 arc with The Thinker is criminally underrated. For the first time in the series, it wasn't about how fast Barry had to be to defeat a villain. Barry had to think to win. The villain of the week mattered again, because they were part of The Thinker's ultimate evil plan. What's shocking is the real difference between the show's direction for The Thinker and the actual comic book creation. Clifford DeVoe was a real, underused villain in more recent comic book storylines. He's recently been showed as a Suicide Squad member with electrodes protruding from his bald head. See, the comic book character is powered by his thinking cap and doesn't hold the same capabilities as the show's version. If anything, the CW writers buffed the thinker by giving him his power-absorbing chair and bulking up his evil plan for this run. Their Clifford DeVoe is presented as a twisted Sherlock Holmes with superpowers. Every version of the Thinker's power-ups was exciting. It's one of the few times the show gave a villain a better look. Captain Cold If he had told us at the start of CW's run with The Flash that we'd end up loving Leonard Snart as a character, we wouldn't believe you. Somehow, the showrunners built Captain Cold into an anti-hero with a more in-depth backstory than we'd ever seen in the comics. Not to mention, he's proven to be a powerful ally when Team Flash needs to pull him out of his timeline. In the comics, Snart leans into the whole Captain Cold persona pretty hard. He mastered the art of bending absolute zero to further his burgeoning criminal career. His look turned into an Eskimo about to hit up a rave in downtown Juneau. Yeah, Snart, those glasses aren't helping your look. The show leaned more into the heist and criminal part of Snart's past. He wears more deep blue colors and never dresses like he's about to explore Antarctica. The closest we get to the comic book look is the fur color around his coat's hood. Even his glasses are more refined and update the character immensely. Cicada Once again, we're stuck in a conundrum. There are two versions of Cicada in the show and only one original version in the comics. We've got Orlin Dwyer and his daughter Grace Gibbons in the show, and David Hirsch in the comics. Both villains cause The Flash a lot of pain, but they're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Turns out, the comic book Cicada is personally connected to his lightning bolt dagger. He uses the weapon to steal life energy from people The Flash saved. Because of this, Cicada in the comics is depicted as your typical immortal old man with a long goatee and sage-like robes. The show's Cicada also uses iconic daggers, but he disguises his look with a Bane-like mask. His powers nullify metahuman powers, and Grace and Orlin both focus on their vendetta on metahumans as a whole. To be honest, we wish Cicada did more in the show. At least the comic book version, despite his basic design, felt more personal. CW Cicada could have been any hero's villain. Bloodwork We wanted to believe so badly that Bloodwork was going to finish out the entire sixth season of Flash. It all faded in a matter of episodes because the writers needed to make way for the Crisis on Infinite Earths. Ramsey Rosso was turned into a speed bump villain for the actual threat facing Flash. Bloodwork also got shortchanged on his appearance. He's meant to resemble a more fluid-like carnage. He's a mad, overpowering embodiment of bad blood. He views himself as an antibody, intended to cure the city of the virus that he calls Flash. You need my blood. How grand. The comic book version has all his powers focus on the physical element of blood. He can manipulate everybody else's blood and keep himself nearly invulnerable. The CW version of Bloodwork will live on in our nightmares. Seriously, what the heck were they thinking when they created that CGI monstrosity? Ain't nobody wants to see that, guys. However, the show did upgrade Ramsey by allowing him to develop zombie-like goons by manipulating people's blood. He proved to hold a more psychological edge on Barry that we hadn't seen from the character. The Trickster Why did we decide to round out this list with The Trickster? Uh, because Mark Hamill is a treasure, and the world needs to make sure he's appreciated at all times? 
Hamill has played the trickster in two separate television series, and even voiced the character in multiple animated appearances. He's as much the trickster as he is the Joker. So, sure, he's not the most powerful, but he is undoubtedly one of the most iconic villains. Hamill's CW trickster certainly appears more like the Joker. He doesn't wear a flashy jester costume and instead opts for the colorful penguin suit you'd see on a carnival barker. Axel wears a long duster jacket and also appears like some kind of carnival worker. Neither version of the trickster resembles the comics version or even the 1990 Hamill edition. The trickster usually wears some kind of colorful tights with orange and blue as the primary colors. In the comics, Axel is also shown with long blonde hair and more stout body shape. Yeah, that one didn't make it into the show. That was beautiful. <laughs> so, how pumped are you to see which new villains we'll get to see in Season 7? And which do you prefer, the comic book rogues or their sinister show versions? Tell us in the comments down below, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Supporting the Binger helps bring more Flash content to our humble little corner of the internet.